अब दलित महिलाएं हैं गरीब महिलाएं हैं और ग्रामीण क्षेत्रों की महिलाएं हैं और वो अशिक्षा के भी शिकार है वो भूमिहीनता के भी शिकार है लैंडलेस परिवारों के लोग हैं तो उनके साथ खड़ा होना एक बहुत चैलेंजिंग टास्क है बहुत चुनौती बड़ा काम क्योंकि जनरल रूप से भी ह्यूमन राइट्स के जो एक्टिविस्ट होते हैं उन 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 रिमोट पुराने पिछड़े इलाकों में आप कभी बुंदेलखंड जाइए हमारे साथी हैं कुछ चित्रकूट से भीतर जो इलाकों में लगता नहीं कि यहाँ कोई सभ्यता की कोई रोशनी यहाँ पर पहुंची है कोई विकास की योजना यहाँ पर पहुंची है अगर वहां की किसी महिला के रिप्रोडक्टिव राइट्स के सवाल को आप हाई कोर्ट के फोरम पे लाते हैं तो एक बहुत बड़ी बात होती है आप अब बहुत बड़े सवाल के साथ आप जूझते हैं और बहुत बड़ा जोखिम भी अपने हाथ में लेते हैं और इसीलिए आपको सम्मान किया जाता है समाज में कि जो कानून और कोर्ट के चौखट के बारे में जानता नहीं जो संविधान के कानून के अपने अपने लिए अधिकार के बारे में जानता नहीं उसको हिंदुस्तान के सबसे बड़े कानून के जो मंदिर है जो कोर्ट्स है जो भी है उन तक उनकी बात आप ले जा रहे हैं तो ये बहुत ये, ये, एक बड़ा एक उपलब्धि है हमारे ह्यूमन राइट्स लॉ नेटवर्क की इन तमाम पहलकदमियों का और मैं समझता हूँ कि कॉलेज साहब ने जिस तरह से कहा है कि हम लोग एक रिफ्रेश करेंगे कि पी कैसे होते हैं या तमाम जो घटनाएं घट गट रही हैं उसको किस तरह से केस में तब्दील किया जाए और उस केस को किस तरह से अधिकार प्राप्त करने का एक मुहिम है उसमें तब्दील किया जाए उसमें हम लोग कामयाबी कामयाबी यहाँ हासिल करेंगे क्योंकि तो सबके अपने अनुभव कुछ हमारे अनुभव जो हमने आपसे शेयर किया कुछ हमारे एलविन का है कुछ अफसर भाई का है कुछ और सारे साथियों के किशोर जी का बहुत सारे हमारे साथी आए हैं और जब एक दूसरे से अनुभव का आदान प्रदान करेंगे तो कुछ नई बातें हम लोग निकाल पाएंगे और मैं समझता हूँ कि आज हम लोग दो दिन के लिए इकट्ठा हुए हैं इसकी एक बहुत बड़ी कामयाबी होगी कि ठोस निर्णय ठोस कार्यक्रम और उसको लागू करने की तक की एक समय सारणी बनाकर एक टाइम बाउंड बनाकर हम यहाँ से निकलेंगे तभी रिप्रोडक्टिव राइट्स चाहे वो सड़क पे प्रसव होने का सवाल हो चाहे स्टरलाइजेशन का सवाल हो चाहे सेक्सुअल हेल्थ राइट्स का सवाल हो इसको हम आगे बढ़ा पाएंगे धन्यवाद थैंक यू राइट साहब Now, before uh, the next speaker, Sonali says few words. I want to say, just as we have a long relationship with uh, the Makata Foundation, and now a budding relationship with the Population Foundation of India, and this meeting today is part of that uh, project and program. The Center for Reproductive Rights has been our very old ally and friend for many, many years. and right from the beginning of our work on reproductive rights the center of reproductive rights has been sending us all kinds of information international judgments and micas briefs and so on so nali i met today for the first time and the center for reproductive rights has set up an office in kathmandu and i was very happy to uh, meet with her today and i immediately requested her uh, to come on to this panel and say a few words about the activities and work of the center for reproductive so that in please um firstly thank you so much colin good morning everybody um mujhe bahut khushi ho rahi hai yahan pe aake sabse milne ka jo ek mauka hai kyunki maine jaise abhi colin ne bataya humne kathmandu mein june mein office establish kiya और uh, हम साउथ एशिया रीजन में हम काम करेंगे साउथ ईस्ट एशिया रीजन में भी काम करेंगे तो हमारा फर्स्ट इम्पोर्टेंट थिंग है ऑफ कोर्स एच आर एल एन के साथ हमने uh, बहुत समय से हम काम कर रहे हैं पर और कॉन्टैक्ट्स भी जो हैं जो आप ग्रास रूट्स लेवल पे आप विभिन्न ठाव से आए हैं और आप वहाँ काम कर रहे हैं आपके काम के बारे में भी जानकारी लेने के लिए आज ये बहुत अच्छा यू नो जगह है Um, जो हमारे लिए लर्निंग के लिए बहुत ज्यादा एक्सपीरियंस होगा इसलिए मैं आई एम रियली थैंकफुल टू ऑल ऑफ फॉर प्रोवाइडिंग मी द डिटेल्स ऑफ दिस कंसल्टेशन थोड़ा सा हमारे सेंटर फॉर रिप्रोडक्टिव राइट्स के बारे में मैं बताना चाहती हूँ सेंटर फॉर रिप्रोडक्टिव राइट्स इट्स बीन वर्किंग फॉर द लास्ट ट्वेंटी ईयर्स इन द एरिया ऑफ रिप्रोडक्टिव health rights and um, it's an ngo that's based in the us uh, but now with 20 years of completing that we're moving to regions as well 
And uh, some of the regions where we have our regional offices, um, they are Latin America, there's uh, Africa, uh, then of course the Europe, and as I just mentioned, we also have an office in Asia, that's in Kathmandu now. Um, but what have we been doing for the last 20 years? Um, so as uh, I heard, you know, the uh, earlier two speakers already spoke of the issue of uh, reproductive health rights not being recognized as a human right. That's exactly what we started from. So, you know, the whole issue of connecting reproductive health rights to the larger framework of human rights and then the clear linkage is that, yes, this is right to life, but then if a woman whose life is not saved and she dies during a maternal death, what's his linkage with the right to health, with the right to life, with the right to health, and the all different rights that come together with that. So, kind of giving that whole framework, which ICPD se aaya, jo Beijing uh, platform se aaya, jo Vienna Declaration se aaya, jo women's rights ke issue hai, women's rights and the connection between women's rights issues and the larger um, human rights uh, struggle as well. So, the main work that uh, Center for Reproductive Rights does is protecting and promoting women's rights in the area of reproductive health law. Um, what are the areas that we are specifically working on? Um, just as many areas that have been mentioned here, of course, the issue of maternal mortality, addressing the issue of maternal mortality, um, access to contraception, then the issue of access to safe, affordable abortions, and um, recently we are also moving on into working on issues of harmful traditional practices, including uh, the work on relating to child marriage. So that's a new area where we are really wanting to work even more because um, when we look at the whole big magnum amount of the whole issue of maternal deaths, it's because it starts from people not knowing their rights because you're married at such a young age, you do not know your rights, you do not know that you have a right over your body. It starts from there, then your access to contraception, then your access to deciding the number of your children, when you want to have them, the, uh, you know, the whole... Um, difference between uh, difference of years between children, so all that gamut, and that we thought it was essential for us to also work on the issue of child marriage. Um, what are the different strategies? Some of the different strategies that we are using. I'm not going to go into detail on all of them, but of course, litigation is one of the most important strategies. So, um, you know, filing repetitions. Again, we've been working with HRLN here in uh, in India the Forum for Women Law and Development in Nepal. And let me say that the issue of reproductive health rights is not, you know, that the situation is not only bad here, but it's bad everywhere. And I think we've been seeing the recent case in Ireland where an uh, uh, Indian doctor died just because she did not have access to the care that she had a right to. Um, so, you know, that's like one of the issues. And we don't only work at the national level courts, but we also work with uh, the international treaty monitoring bodies. So if the case is not kind of you know taken care of, because of course our first call has to be at the national level. So you know you can start with the maybe even at the district court, then going down to going up to the higher court, the appellate, and then you go to the Supreme Court. And if it's not solved there, then you again have the larger forum where under the different um, international human rights treaties, you have the treaty monitoring bodies, which give you a forum to then take your complaint there as well. So we have been using those mechanisms. We've used the Human Rights Committee. We've used the CEDAW Committee. We've also used the Committee Against Torture. So there are varied cases. And um, if you want more information of how we have done that, um, I'm afraid I could not bring uh, public many publications with myself, but you can always log on to our website. That's www.preprorights.org. And you'll get details of the cases, the litigations that we have done at national level, as well as at international level and the different strategies that we have used um, while taking these um, cases forward. Um, we've also been working on policy initiatives, of course, you know, uh, looking at laws and what are the areas in, in, the, uh, in the issue of reproductive health rights. Uh, for instance, uh, the recent um, work that we're doing in Nepal is on the uh, having a separate abortion um, law, which has a rights-based approach to women's um, health as well. So that's an area, including on uh, issues of policy as well, for instance, the <coughs> contraceptive policy that's there. So what is it that is lacking in that policy because of which women do not have access 
to contraception. So looking at those issues as well is something um, that we are doing. Um, and uh, we also are involved in training of lawyers and judges. And uh, that's something that I was uh, sharing with Colin this morning. And he shared that you know I should be talking about this as well. And I think this is a right fora because just taking up the cases, yeah, taking up the cases is a very important thing. But at the same time, working with the lawyers and the judges for them to understand the framework is also a very, very important thing. For instance, in Nepal, um, we started working with judges uh, for about, it's, I think it's 10 years since we started working with them. And I must say that in the last five or seven years, we've got real wonderful judgments from them. It's because they want to know more about it, but then within the limited forces and within the limited as um, Colin said, it has to be, you know, you have to also start learning. And in that process, we had to kind of work with the judges to share with them the smaller issues like what's the difference between formal equality and substantive equality, starting from the CEDAW and then moving on to the reproductive health rights. And in 2009, we had a very wonderful judgment, we call it the Lakshmi judgment, where uh, they actually established the whole uh, right of, uh, you know, right to abortion as a constitutional right as well. In Nepal, you, it's, it's a wonderful, um, you know, in, in the interim constitution, we had an opportunity to, again, work with different uh, civil society members to include uh, right to reproductive health as a fundamental right. But then again, as Colin was saying, just having the right there, but if it's not implemented, then where do you go? So you go back to the court. And this was a case, again, of a woman from the far western district of Nepal who was pregnant for the fifth time, and she did not want the pregnancy. So she and her husband both went to the public hospital to say that they wanted to terminate the pregnancy, which is legal in Nepal under uh, various circumstances. But then she was asked for 1,200 rupees, and she could not pay that. She went to another hospital. In a private hospital, the charge was even higher. She could not. And what happened to it? She really, she had to continue the pregnancy. So out of that, that case came up. And then it also was kind of a, you know, the repetition that came up was a very strong case. And in that case, the judgment that has come up, of course, one of the things that I already mentioned is establishing right to uh, abortion as a constitutional right, but then also asking to the government to formulate a separate law on abortions, which has a rights-based approach, which looks at the reproductive rights framework that has come over the period of years. And, then it, and that's like a, a directive order given to the government. But now, again, we have a very good judgment, but in terms of implementation, we don't have a law. So then that's our third strategy, where we are working with national human rights institutions. And in this case, we are working with the National Women's Commission to draft a bill which is on a rights-based approach. And then, you know, kind of, because if you have the National Women's Commission with you, it's easier to then get it through the um, legislature for uh, signature or for enactment. So like this is some of the work um, that we've been doing and I'm sure we'll have more opportunities to share. And if you're interested in any of the issues that I've raised, I'm more than happy to share more details with you. Um, thank you once again and I'm really delighted to be here and learn uh, more from all of you. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, thanks, Mr. Colin Gonzalez, for enlightening us on the various power of law and how we can use law for restoring the reproductive rights of the women and save their life. Thank you, Mr. K.K. Roy, and thank you, Ms. Ragmi, for enlightening us.